Welcome to this video. This is a tutorial on how to constrain a camshaft in SOLIDWORKS so that you can know always what your uh, lift and duration is, what your resting and, and full height is, and be able to adjust it very easily if you have to in the future, which you usually do. <laughs> they can act differently on you than what you expect sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a part here. select the front plane and I'm going to create a shaft uh, that will be the center of rotation for our cam shaft make that one inch and I'll extrude it two inches and from there I'll start sketching on this plane let's make a cam lobe where we can constrain all of these things in a way that's very useful to us first thing I'm going to do is put down a three-point arc and this will be the where the cam follower is on this three-point arc the valve will be closed so this will be the smallest height that you have on the camshaft and I'm going to add a constraint between this three-point arc and this circle to make it co-centric and that way no matter where my camshaft goes it always stays consistent with our center of rotation then I'm going to add a radius. I'll add a radius of um, 0 0.75 and that gives me a set height above this shaft that I can reduce if I need to or increase if I need to in case I need my valve more open or more closed than it is after I've constrained it. I'll trace out a basic cam shape and we'll go over some constraints that you can have in order to fully constrain it it's important to note that you can have three-point arcs here instead of lines if you want an ultra-smooth cam. It's just a few more constraints and relations, but it's very doable and you can have it if you prefer. I'm going to make this tangent. Tangent. It's very handy to have a camshaft where everything is tangent to everything else. tangent and tangent. Now, I want to know um, if this is 360 degrees around, I want to know what kind of uh, duration that I'm getting. So I'm going to put two construction lines as they are there and set an angle between them. I'll go 120 degrees and now I can say, well, I've got 120 degrees of closed valve along this rotation, and the rest is where the valve is either opening, closing, or at maximum height. It's also important to note that this has to give you a little bit of extra turn before the valve actually opens and closes when you use a tangent line. So that tangent stuff can trip you up. You might have to give yourself a few extra degrees, 121, 124, or something like that. But for this example, this is fine. Now I'm going to add another center line from the center point of this three-point arc to the center of this, and that will be my lift. So I can put a measurement on this line. I can say I want 1.25 inches of lift. And notice my actual lift is going to be 1.25 minus the difference between this radius here since they both measure off of the center. This looks like a pretty harsh cam, so I can even that out by making this one inch if I had to. No, that's a little bit too much. If I say 0 0.8, you can uh, maintain a, uh, a nice cam shape that way. Also, I'm still not fully constrained as I've got some blue going on. It's because I'm not constrained this way, but this works to my advantage as well. What I'm going to do here is put a vertical center line up as a reference. Now, depending on your crankshaft design and different positions, you'll need to figure this out on your own, but you'll have to space your cam lobes relative to each other. So if I wanted a 60 degree difference, then I can fully constrain my camshaft lobe and I can come back at any time and reconstrain it if I need a different timing. I can also change the lift and duration by changing any of these measurements at any time. So this is a very handy thing to do when I'm done. I just have to uh, extrude it and I've got a nice camshaft 
here to work with. Depending on my crankshaft timing, it might be even easier still to mirror all these features to the other plane. Um, if that is plausible, then go for it. Uh, that is a basic way or strategy of getting a camshaft to act exactly how you want it to act, measure how you want it to measure, and get it to be exactly what you want it to be. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.